break current events, especially politics, into their stories. But now the politics are flying off the page and into real life. Bruce Wayne. I'm sorry. I wouldn't be bothering you here, but your people keep telling me you're unavailable. The Batman, one of the most anticipated movies this year, will not premiere in Russia today as initially planned. Warner Media announcing they're pausing its release in light of Russia's attack on Ukraine. Russia has often been featured in DC Comics, usually in a negative light. Joining me now to talk more about the significance of this is Alex Grand, founder of Comic Book Historians. Alex, thanks for coming on Morning Rush. How have Russian politics influenced comic book storylines, especially when it comes to Batman? Well, I think that uh, in in history with the Soviet Union, more in the 20th century and now, uh, it's had it's always started as either as shifty allies, allies that are conditional based on whatever political situation is going on. Um, sometimes they're aligned, sometimes they're not. Um, and then in the uh, and that was going on from the late 60s with a character named Red Star versus the Teen Titans. It was like a shifty alliance. Um, toward the 80s, middle 80s, it was a little more positive with Mikhail Gorbachev around. Then the late 80s, there was a character named the KG Beast, uh, created by the creator of Thanos, uh, Jim Starlin, who was kind of a killer. And uh, uh, he was hired as a, as a secret arm of the KGB to create chaos uh, within our political system. And so that was going on in the later 80s. I think uh, after the downfall of the Soviet Union, uh, the, uh, you know, characters like Superman were, were kind of portrayed as what if they were raised uh, under Russian rule instead of America, and they were always portrayed as a worse person. Um, but, uh, yeah, the KG Beast uh, is probably the most notorious of the characters. He was in the Batman versus Superman movie. A real mortal enemy to, of Batman made Batman question his own morals of if he wanted to kill him or not. Um, I think now what's going on is is different. It's not the Soviet thing anymore. It's more of the Russian thing and meddling with elections. Uh, there's also the concept of hacking our computer system, sowing chaos. And so uh, there's a new uh, comic called Get Joker, where Joker, because he is an agent of chaos, uh, is actually being funded by Russia uh, to, to create chaos in America. Not necessarily that he's an ally of the Russians, but more that he has the money to kind of go crazy here. That, that's kind of more the, the new thought. Interesting creative concept there. So what has the reaction uh, from Russian audiences been to Russia being portrayed in such a negative light? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, you don't really hear too much about that. I think um, if if that were to come up, I think it tends to be uh, not that often and probably more in light of like they understand that it's not necessarily about Russian people being portrayed like that. It's more about the government and and the things that it may do at times that a lot of the people even now there don't agree with. Um, so I think in a way, it's kind of an understanding that there's a difference between the people and then the government that's kind of calling the shots over there. So um, we mentioned Warner Media is not releasing the new Batman movie in Russia. Is that going to hurt uh, Warner's bottom line? You know, uh, I think the less people buy tickets will always have a negative impact on the bottom line. I think that it's markets like the United States and Europe and China that really tend to govern a lot of the box office success, though. Um, also, I think, uh, you know, the right now the people in Russia are dealing with a lot of things. They Maybe they, they might not necessarily all turn in to watch Batman as like it would be on more of a routine sort of day. So it might not affect them that much. I think right now when you have countries like Switzerland actually withholding funds from Russia as part of sanctions, I think then there's these private sector kind of sanctions that are also happening where, you know, you have studios not releasing movies there, not showing support for what they're doing with Ukraine. Um, I think it's going to be more of a civilized Western world kind of approach to how they deal with this. Before I let you go, it's been quite a heavy week here with this Russian invasion. So I want to end on a lighter note. Um, as a yeah. Batman fan, you've already seen this film. Uh, Morning Rush is a spoiler-free zone. Don't you dare. Um, but what yeah. what can people look forward to with this movie? Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a new visual concept of Batman. You know, I loved Michael Keaton as Batman when I was a kid. And, but uh, this offers like a fresh take. It's more on the detective side. Uh, there's definitely uh, a feeling of of an art form being depicted like a darker art form with Gotham. Um, th they always 
there's always a cool way of depicting Gotham City, but they actually found some interesting ways of doing this movie. It's more on Batman than Bruce Wayne. Um, I thought that the casting was perfect. Robert Pattinson's very good. Um, I think he'll definitely establish his own legacy as Batman. What's your What's your order? You got Michael Keaton at the top. I'm a Christian Bale guy. Yeah. Well, I, Christian Bale was was great at that, right? And and he had three movies to prove himself. So um, uh, I definitely feel like uh, I, I'm more of a Keaton guy technically, but Bale was really impressive in those three movies. There's obviously a look at all the the different Batmans over time. Quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. Comic book historian yeah, found yeah. comic book historian's founder Alex Grand. Thanks for your time, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you.